But God bless you. I'm Bishop Joseph Juan Walker III, and thank you so much for tuning in to Deeper Dive right here at the Mount Zion Church, Nashville, Tennessee. I want to thank all of you so much for just being connected to this place where we grow every single week in the Word of God. I want to make sure you take a moment and follow our ministry at Mount Zion Nashville on Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Follow me at Joseph Walker 3 Follow my wife at Dr. Steph Walker. And make sure on this YouTube channel you like, share, subscribe. And also, Make sure you comment, and we'd love to hear from you. Get our Mount Zion app. It's free. Download it. You can get notes, and you can interact with those notes, email them to yourself, connect with one of our small groups. We want to make sure that uh, you connect there. Go to our Christian Education uh, portal right there on the app, and uh, join one of our small groups, and we look forward to you doing just that. Uh, Table Talks are truly a blessing, and I appreciate you so much. We are truly, truly excited about uh, this 15-week journey. And of course, I do want you to make certain that you get a journal. I talked about it uh, this Sunday because I want to make sure that you are journaling at the end of these Bible study teachings all the things that I'm speaking into your life and I'm giving you specific things at the end of each message to journal about. So make sure you do that. So you'll receive that uh, at the end of the message, uh, some things that you should write down, and I appreciate it so much. We're going to give you a chance right now uh, to to give, and of course, we're in this 15 weeks of generosity, and I want right now you to prepare your hearts to to give. Let's put seed in the ground. So right now, I want you to do that. Your tithe, your offering, it matters to God. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and praise for this wonderful opportunity we have uh, to grow and to, to sow. We thank you today. Uh, it's because of what we know. And we give your name the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So faith forward. I want to talk today about fighting for the faith. Uh, how do you do this relative to fighting fear or failure? Sometimes this idea that we think failure is final. But today I want to help you understand failure is not final. So as we explore um, how the experiences of Peter and Moses teach us that failure is not the end. It's important for us to use our failure as stepping stones and faith to trust God. Now, I think it's important as we go into this today that as we're on our faith journey, I want us to really seek to believe God together to restore this house uh, called Mount Zion. It's important because as we deal with fear of failure, I think it's important for us to see the correlation. Uh, what God wants to do in your home, what God wants to do in your church, what God wants to do to everything connect to your business, it's going to be tied to the teachings I'm sharing with you now. Dr. Lonnie Anderson, have you ever heard of, of that name? Well, I'm sure you may not, may not ring a bell, but this was an incredible story. I watched TV one day and there was a family enjoying outdoor activities. And uh, the children were playing with water guns and balloons. And me being the researcher I am, I found out that Dr. Lonnie Johnson is the innovator of the Super Circle Water Gun. Now, in 2024, he, he achieved another breakthrough that captivated the world. After years of dedication and overcoming countless obstacles, he successfully developed a new form of solid-state battery technology that promises to revolutionize energy storage. So Dr. Johnson's journey was anything but easy, though. Because despite his earliest successes, he faced significant setbacks, skepticisms, funding challenges as he pursued this new venture. Many doubted whether a former NASA engineer turned toy inventor could impact the highly competitive and complex field of energy technology. Yet, his resolve never wavered. He believed that failure was not an option, but a necessary part of the journey toward innovation. So his breakthrough in 2024 not only validated the years of perseverance, but also positioned him as a leading figure in the fight for sustainable energy. Dr. Johnson's story reminds us that no matter how many failures we encounter, they do not define our destiny. Listen to that. Instead, they shape us, refine us, refine our skills, Prepare us for success that has the power to change the world. You can change the world. In our spiritual journey, we face moments where we feel like we failed. I know I have. And, and, and there, our efforts seem fruitless. But like Edison, we are called to persevere, trust God, 
in the, in the midst of our failures, you know, when Edison did all that he did in terms of an inventor and, 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 and a creative. I mean, you think about all the people that in history created great things. That's the premise of this teaching. Thomas Edison, others who created but out of failure kept pushing. It gives us a greater understanding. There are three statistics about people who experience failure. One, that's entrepreneurial failure rates. Approximately 20% of new businesses fail within the first year, and about 50% fail within five years. And despite these high failure rates, many entrepreneurs learn from their experiences and go on to start successful ventures. Two, think about the impact on mental health. Studies show that experience, experiencing failure can significantly impact your mental health. According to research published in the Journal of Behavioral Science, around 30% of individuals who face significant failures in life report experiencing symptoms of depression or anxiety as a direct result. Number three, resilience and recovery. Research from the American Psychological Association indicates that about 70% of people who experience failure exhibit resilience and are able to recover and bounce back. Here, ladies and gentlemen, are individuals who often report increased personal growth, enhanced problem-solving skills, and improved emotional regulation following their recovery from failure. Think about that for a moment. Just because you fail doesn't mean it's final. You can recover. That's a wonderful text. I love to preach it. It's about Peter walking on the water. And you know, Peter was one of Jesus' closest disciples. He's a figure marked by both great faith and notable failure. That's his life. Originally named Simon, he was a fisherman before Jesus called him to become a fisher of men in Matthew 4.19. Renamed Peter, meaning rock, he was destined for leadership among the disciples. And despite his strong faith, Peter experienced moments of profound failure. The most famous was the threefold denial of Jesus on the night of his arrest. Remember that? Even after he boldly proclaimed, he never abandoned him. However, Peter's story didn't end with failure. After Jesus' resurrection, Peter was forgiven and restored by Jesus during a seaside encounter. Go get my disciples and Peter. And strengthened by this grace, Peter went on to become a key leader in the early Christian church, preaching with courage and even facing persecution and martyrdom. But his life exemplifies how faith, even amidst failure, can lead to redemption, power, and transformation in the lives of God's people. Think about that story again I talked about. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33, immediately Jesus made his disciples get into a boat, go before him to the other side. Watch this. And when he had sent them away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why do you doubt? And when they got in the boat, the wind ceased. And those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Let's talk about out-of-the-boat blessings. Because the disciples first had to be obedient to get in the boat by themselves while he went to pray. Don't expect God to give you an out-of-the-boat experience if you never get in the boat. You got to obey God through every process and watch the revelation of elevation. Peter's willingness to step out of the boat demonstrates courage. It demonstrates faith. 
Now think about this. As you process that word, I want you to discuss some moments in your own life. Reflect on this with friends and family. Have there been times in your life you've had to step out and it seemed daunting? I know there were times in my life I remember, whoo, stepping out of the boat, Mount Zion Church, Jefferson Street location, we were growing, and God was telling me to go to the World Baptist Center, and I had to step out of everything that was familiar, comfortable, and stretch and go into that place and overcome my fear. Have there been moments in your life? Think about it. Write them down. All of us had moments. But here's the second thing. There's the paralyzing effect of fear. Because when you understand what fear can do, you understand how the enemy will use it to your disadvantage. Peter shifted his focus to the wind and the waves. He became afraid, and the Bible says he began to sink. And it illustrates how fear can overwhelm us and cause us to falter when we take our eyes off Jesus and focus on our circumstances instead. It teaches us the importance of letting fear distract us from our faith. That's why it's important that we concentrate on the, our promise and focus on where God is taking us and not be overwhelmed and lose our footing. But we have to continue moving into the thing that God has called us to do. There will be difficulties, but ladies and gentlemen, you have to stay focused and you have to rely on Jesus and his strength. You know, I think it's so important because when you, when you hear this kind of word and you're out there, sometimes fear can be to the point where you're just so locked in on what's wrong that you miss all the wonderful things that are right. So you have to be willing to deal with this. And the lesson really helps us understand the critical role of faith and focus in overcoming our fear. You can't have both. You can't have fear and faith. But let's talk about the power of focus and faith. How do you check your spiritual vestibular system? I want you to think about this. We think about science between your eyes and your movement. Most people assume that this has to do with the brain only. You know, my eyes and my movement, how I see. But it really has to do with the function of your ears. What's in your inner ear controls your motion? The vestibular system handles your balance and orientation. Think about it. Located in the inner ear, this system detects changes in head positions and movement. And it sends signals to the brain to help maintain balance and posture. So there's a coordination with vision and the vestibular system because they work closer together with the visual system to keep your balance while walking, especially when you change direction or speed. Now, why did I bring that up? Because this is what I need you to do. Keep Jesus in your inner ear. Keep his word in your inner ear because it helps you keep your balance. When Peter took his eyes off Jesus, he, was, he, was, he wasn't able to walk on the water when he took his eyes. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you can do that which you thought you'd never do before. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, even in the storm, it will enable you to seemingly do the impossible. That's why faith and focus are so critical in this season. Keep your focus on Jesus. Let your faith do the walking. But let me tell you something. You know, I found out that when you trust God and you trust his power, that will give you authority over every spirit of fear. Because by trusting him, amazing things begin to happen in your life. When you trust God, he can trust you with more. And there are many people today who are watching me and you know God is calling you out of the boat, calling you to trust his voice, calling you to truly not be sidetracked by obstacles that may rise up in your life. But you got to keep your faith strong, keep your eyes fixated on him. And you got to know you can accomplish anything through him, even if it looks impossible. What's Jesus' immediate response? When he sees Peter, the Bible says, and about to sink, he saves him and about to sink. Let me just help you with that. God loves you so much that even when you fail, Peter was about to sink. He would begun sinking but did not go completely under, that God will not let you go under. I give God glory that he won't let me go under. Maybe this is for you and your business. It won't go under. 
for you and your marriage, it won't go under. You see, there's so many examples of how people make excuses. Moses is one. Think about this. A central figure in the Bible he leads Israel out of Egypt, struggles with a speech impediment. In Exodus 4 and 10, Moses expressed this fear and reluctance. When God called him, he brought up his own inadequacies. And despite his hesitation, God reassured Moses by appointing his brother Aaron as the spokesperson. And through faith and divine support, Moses overcame his fear, delivering God's people and guiding his people to freedom. And what this story illustrates is that even in the face of personal challenges and limitations, courage must still prevail. You know, all of us have those moments where we feel inadequate, and there's a fear of inadequacy. In Exodus 4, 10 through 13, when Moses said, Lord, I, I, I'm not eloquent neither before nor since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So the Lord said to him, then who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute and the deaf, the seeing or the blind? Have not I, the Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. But he said, oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. Moses, his fear of not being believed and his lack of eloquence highlights common insecurities that many of us have in our own lives. I know there are moments I'm like, Lord, don't you know I'm weak in this area? Don't you know that I can't do this? And God's like, I've already factored that in. And I will give you the support and the things around you to help you achieve purpose in the earth. So you don't have to be fearful of your inadequacies, or your shortcomings. God gives assurance and reassurance in Exodus 4.14. So the Lord, uh, so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite, your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he's also coming out to meet you. Imagine that. God puts the support in the people around us and provides reassurance to Moses that you have everything you need. You, ladies and gentlemen, have everything you need. So as you think about this, I want you to begin to think about ways in which God has supported you, given you what you need to get what you need to get done. All of us have something we need to get done, and we have to trust God's patience and provision. In Exodus 4, 15 through 17, now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and I will teach you what you shall say. So he shall be your spokesman to the people and he himself shall be as a mouth for you and you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. What a wonderful, wonderful revelation. Despite Moses' excuses, God patiently addresses each one and provides Aaron as a spokesman. There have been times in my life, and I know yours, where God has provided, if I were patient, to know that God would never send me into an assignment without giving me the support that I need. God would never send you somewhere and not give you the support you needed. Think about this, from Peter to Moses, from Moses to Peter, failure is really a learning opportunity for all of us. It's an experience for us to look at our past flaws and failures and say, what can I learn and gain from this? Because failure does not have to be final. It will not define you. All the folks I talked about today, learn from it, grew from it. And that's what I want you to do. Learn from it, grow from it. Yes, you may have failed. Yes, you may have doubted. Yes, you may have had a lack of courage, but learn from it because this is how strength and our faith is built and this is how character is built. Here's what I want you to do. You've been watching this Bible study. I've asked you on this 15-week journey to take out a journal. I want you to journal some things. I want you to reflect on situations where you felt fear holding you back. I want you to write about that in your journal. I want you to think about what the emotions were you that surfaced. This is important. And how did they influence your actions? And what did you learn from the experience? Consider all the past failures that seemed immutable at the time, but look at how God has used it to shape your character and lead you to new opportunities. So write about how this failure contributed to your growth. I believe this week, as we are moving in this whole journey, 
Our prayer is for courage and faith to overcome the fear of failure. When you pray, I want you to take a moment to ask God to help you trust in his plan, even when the outcome is uncertain, and to strengthen you to take bold steps toward knowing that he is with you. I'm praying today for renewed perspective in your life when failure occurs, and I'm praying that God will help you to see it as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block, that God will give you wisdom to learn from every experience and to grow and to be positioned for amazing opportunities as they shall come forth in your life. I'm thankful, and on this 15-week journey, we are excited that you are locked in because this is going to require word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Thank you for tuning in. If you need a relationship with Jesus Christ, come on. Right here is salvation. Text the word salvation to 78228. You want to rededicate your life. You need to, a church home wherever you are in the world. You can join the Mount Zion Church and connect with us here. We're excited. I want you to do it now. Salvation at 78228. I'm so thankful. I look forward to you staying on this journey with us and make sure you're journaling. Do all those things that are necessary. Know that we appreciate you. We love you. And until next time. We'll see you again. Until then, peace.